Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And a couple of months ago, I shot this video right here about how to create a mobile menu, a mobile hamburger bun menu, if you want to call it that, inside of your ClickFunnels account. And after reviewing it, working with a client the other day, and we reviewed the video, I started looking at this. And, and what we did originally, we used a bunch of HTML, and we put in a style sheet here with the CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. And I started looking at that going, you know something, I, I think there's a much easier way of doing this mobile menu. And so that's what I was working on this morning. And that's what I came up with. So here we have just a page. And sorry if it's like blinding you at this point here. I did this on purpose just so we could see on the scroll. And on the, on the desktop, I just threw in a navigation element. This is really irrelevant. And I set this top section to desktop only. And we'll come in here and we'll take a look at the sections. And so I got the desktop menu set here and I named it that and a mobile menu. And then I have this bottom section down here as well. So that when we click on a button, we can scroll down to the bottom. And so now let's uh, go into the mobile view. We will click on that. And uh, so now we're in the mobile view. So let's go back to our sections. And you'll see here now we got mobile view is showing an eyeball, whereas a desktop is crossed off because we are in the mobile view at this point. And so now let's take a look at, well, first off, just in case you don't know how to rename those sections, let's just go back in here. We will click on mobile menu, come down to the bottom, click on the hashtag, and then you come in under title here. You type in whatever you want your title to be, and then you click on update. Now, the reason you're going to want to do that, besides the fact that it helps you with being able to come in and look at your sections and know what is what, and then when you go into your rows and you manage your rows, you also will have the names of the sections right here over the tops of the rows, and it just helps you find stuff a lot easier. But if you wanted to put in a scroll function and you wanted it to smooth scroll down to the bottom, let's say, then you want to put in the name. So what we're going to do next is we're going to open up a couple of elements in here, and we're going to unhide them, I should say. And what they are is one is, as you can see, a custom JavaScript HTML element, and another one is just a text element. And in this text element in particular, we have a hyperlink, and that hyperlink goes to hashtag scroll dash bottom. Well, bottom is the actual title that we set under, here, let me show you again. Under here, we came in, wait, I'm sorry, that was under a section. So let's click on manage the sections, and we named that bottom right there. So it's under the title, we named it bottom. So now when somebody were to click on this link right here, it will smooth scroll them. It'll take like about a half a second at the most. It'll scroll them down to the bottom instead of just jumping there, which it would do if we just put in the ID selector at this point. So that's why I did it that way. But now let's just take a look at what we have here. And this is, this is the entirety of how we set up this menu. And like I said, in this section here, I just did this as a text element. But really what you could do is you could set up a row, you could set up a section, you could set up buttons inside of here. You could make this really look any way you wanted to. You could have images in here. Once you see how this works, all it does is when we click on the menu up here at the top, it will just toggle whatever we tell it to toggle. So in this case here, I just have it set as a text element. But like I said, it could be a row, it could be a section, and you could have anything you wanted inside of those rows or sections. So now let's go into our custom JavaScript. And actually, before we do that, let's come back up here to the top. And so I put in this menu, and again, all this is is a text element. Let me just uh, show you that. We'll click on that, open it up. And so it's just a subheadline element. Font size, I just left alone at 23. Set the background color to black. And the only thing you need to know here is you come into advanced and you come down to your icon picker. And you can see here the icon we use. All you have to do is just type in bar. And there's the element that we're using right there. And to the left of where it says menu, the only thing you need to know there is just put a space in between. It'll give you a little bit of space there. And in fact, if I can get this to work, the problem is everything is so tight in here. 
We'll even put in two spaces. Now down in the second section, again, this is not a section, of course. It is an element. It is a subheadline element. Again, just left font to 23. And they have the text color as white, which you don't have to set the text color here at all because these are all going to be links. Now, I only have three of them set as links. Number four is not. So I had to turn that to white in order to set that because where I set the link color is actually over here in typography. If you click on that, you come down, you can set your link color right here. And so I have it set to white. Or you could also set it right in here itself when you put in the link. You can set the link color right in here. And, oh, I just see this. This is new. This is nice. That used to be you didn't have the ability to put in a link color. I mean, an actual hexadecimal number at the bottom here. So this is the first time I'm seeing it, and that's pretty cool. It's July 23rd of 2019. And that's the first I saw that. So that's super cool that they got that fixed now. And so um, all we did here is I just, um, you know, here, we'll show you down here. Let's just do number four. Actually, let's X this out first. And we'll do number four. And we will, oops, come on. And we will just highlight this. We will click on the little chain. And in this place again here, we'll just say we're going to go to HTTPS colon slash slash Google dot com. So you can put in any kind of link there. You could put in like I showed you on this one right here. We can put in. Uh, hashtag scroll bottom, so it'll scroll us to the bottom. And there's a few other things you can put in there as well, but that's not for this lesson. So let's uh, click out of here. So that's our two text elements we have set up. So now let's just go into our custom JavaScript HTML box, and there's really only a couple of lines of code that we have to look at. First one is this is the subheadline. CSS ID selector for the word menu with the little hamburger bun icon. So when, what it says here is when somebody clicks on that element, so actually the element goes across the entire page, but when somebody clicks on it, and again, we're on a mobile device, so that means that somebody's tapping on it with their finger. When they tap on it, what we're going to do is we're going to show the other box below it, the subheadline box below it with all the links in it. But again, like I said, you can make that a section, a row, or whatever. And in this case here, I'm saying we're going to toggle it in 500 milliseconds. Now we can just take this out completely and leave it like that, and it'll just appear instantly. But we could put in something like 500 milliseconds, or we could put in fast and it will show up a little bit slower. In fact, I'm gonna put in the term slow, and it'll take, I think it's 800 milliseconds to show up if you put in slow. I think it's 300 if you put in fast, plus you can put in any number in there as well in milliseconds, and again, 500 milliseconds is half a second. So when somebody taps on menu, the subheadline box below it, the content we want to see, the menu itself, is going to appear. Now, what I also said in here is once somebody then taps on any one of the elements inside of the menu itself, so let's say they tap on item number two, what it will do is it will close that element. Because like in the case here in item number three, we have it just scroll to the bottom. Well, when we scroll to the bottom, then we come back up to the top, we don't necessarily want that menu still open. So we want it to close every time we choose an item inside of the menu. So let kill this here. We will save what we did. But then what we have to do actually is we got to come back in here and we got to do two things. We need to come in, manage our elements, and we want to hide that subheadline box, and we also want to hide our custom JavaScript box. Now, the custom JavaScript probably wouldn't show up anyway, but I just tend to hide it when I do this. So we will click on Save, and we will opt in, come back to our opt in template. So, what I have it called, we will refresh the page. And now, of course, we are in the mobile view. So let's shrink this down a bit once it stops loading. We will shrink it down. There we go. Now our menu appeared. 
And so, I mean, don't worry about what the icon looks like here because, again, you're going to be on a mobile, so you're going to be tapping with your finger. There's not going to be any mousing over it at all. So we're going to tap on menu, and you see I had it set to slow. So it takes like eight-tenths of a second for it to show up. And, of course, it toggles as you tap on it back and forth. But then if we click on item number three, it slow scrolled us to the bottom, and it also closed the menu itself as well so we'll do that again and then we will go i will just tell it we wanted to go to um we're gonna go to google our first link here would be for google and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hold down command and click on it because when i set this up i didn't tell it to open up in a new frame i'm sorry in a new uh in a new window new tab um so i didn't want it to overwrite where we were at so in and again let me just show you that because that should be set every time let me see if you come back here and the uh the mobile menu is all squirrely don't worry about it just go back to the desktop and then back to the mobile and you'll be fine so let's come back in here to our sub headline and let's make that visible okay what's going on manage headline visible okay so now here for item number one let's just click on that again click on the pencil and what we can do is click on this little arrow to make it open up in a new tab without it being clicked it'll open up in the existing tab so again let's save that come back here reload the page oops so that's always one thing you got to remember is you have to hide that box Otherwise, that um, you have to hide this element here. Otherwise, what's going to happen is it's just going to show up all the time. And actually, by clicking on it, it would toggle it to the off position. But we want it to start being off. So we will come back in. We will reload the page one more time. Click on our menu. We will click on item one, which opens up a new tab. And it also closed this element. We will click on three, scrolls us to the bottom. And again, slowly opens it. So let's go back one last time and let's take a look at what was in that HTML JavaScript box. So again, very, very simple code. We say when we click on menu, it will slowly open up that second box. And like I said, we can change this slow, fast, put in nothing at all, put in a number, whatever you would like there. And then every time that one of the items within the list is clicked, it will close that box as well. So that is it. I think it's a much easier, much simpler way of being able to put in a menu. Plus it also opens up a lot of options for being able to open and close other parts of your page, other elements, other things you want to have just simply by clicking on any element on the page. You should be able to take my existing code and go from there and be able to open up anything you want at any time. So if you got any questions, feel free to reach out and have a great day.